In this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom captions for your TikToks and Instagram Reels using an app called Zemo. Let's go. Zemo is a captioning tool that uses AI to create custom captions over your videos. It can be used through web browser on your Apple devices or your Android devices. Before we get into this, I want to make you guys aware that this video is sponsored by Zemo. However, I made it abundantly clear to the team that I will be providing an honest review of the application myself. And if there's anything I don't like about the application, I will be letting you know in this video. I've been playing around with Zemo for the last month now, getting a feel of it, getting a feel of the app, using it and seeing how it works in my workflow. And I can safely say that it does fit into my workflow nicely. And that's something I'll be going through in this video as well. Although this video is sponsored by Zemo, this is completely my opinion and a raw and honest view of the app. You can download Zemo through the App Store, the Google Play Store, or you can use it on their website, Zemo.ai. For the examples in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I make short form content. So we will be using it on my iPhone. So jumping into the app, this is what you'll be first greeted with. You can see here all the videos I've already done. So we're gonna select upload a video and we're gonna select a video that we would like to add some captions to. I'm gonna edit this one, which is me talking about my latest YouTube video. If you haven't already checked that out, you definitely should. I'm gonna hit add subtitles, auto, and as you can see, it's gonna be uploading. This is uploading it to their backend server, which means all the processing is done on their end, which means it's not gonna drain your battery, and it means you can leave the app while it's processing. You'll see at the top there, there is an option for spoken language. That's because Zemo supports up to 18 different languages that it can create captions for. We're not gonna use auto highlight, I'll explain that in a minute. I'm gonna immediately just go into single subtitles. I've sort of got an idea of what I like my um, captions to look like through here. They're my settings I'm gonna use for now, and I'm gonna hit recognize. This is now generating my captions. There you go, and the time it took me to have a sip of my coffee, it's generating my captions. Let's give that a run through. Guys at the film safe, which is the place I get all my film developed, have sent me two rolls of film. The first one I'll be shooting on is this, the Alford XP2 Super 400, black and white. I never shoot black and white. The next step is I'm gonna select one of these captions and I'm gonna hit edit text. Here, I can edit just specifically that caption, or if I go over to batch edit, I can edit the entire transcript in through here. You can tap into each part of the transcript and it will play back that bit so you can hear what you're saying and make any changes if you need to. So once you've gone through and edited, you can play back your captions and make sure that it's all in sync, which it looks like mine is. I'm then gonna select back onto the caption again and I'll go onto batch highlight. This is one of my favorite features of the app. You can select words that will become highlighted in a different color from the rest of the text. So I'm gonna highlight the film safe as that's the name of the company that sent me these rolls of films to test with in this video. I'm gonna go for film developed as well. I'm gonna go two rolls, uh, Ilford XP2 Super 400 as that's the name of that film. And I'm gonna highlight I never shoot black and white so to give that a bit more emphasis. If I go into style, highlight, color, I can choose the color that that is highlighted in through this selection here. I'm gonna highlight that in red, orange, lighter orange. We're gonna go for light, a lighter orange. Now while we're in this section, if we go back over to style, we can change all the settings of the captions here. So first things first, font. I'm really liking this Kunia, is that how you say it? I really like this font and the Don Jose. I think, I actually think Don Jose look, or Don Jose, however you say that as well. I'm gonna go for that one. I think that one looks really good. Format, size, let's make it a little tad bigger. I am gonna have mine centered. I want mine white, so we're not going to change the color, but you can do. You can also change your opacity here if you want it to blend in a bit more to your video. You can leave it at 100 for me. Not going to add a stroke, but if you wanted to, you could put like a black one on and then adjust the thickness there. I'm not going to. Shadow, I'm going to give it a little bit of a black shadow and I'm going to leave that at 100%. And then background, I don't like backgrounds personally. Uh, for example, let's put a white one, put it down like that. I'm not a massive fan of backgrounds regardless of my captions, so I'm not going to use that anyway, but it's something you can do. If you go over to the pre-made tab, there's a bunch of pre-made edits and styles that you can just whack on here if you wanted to. So for example, let's chuck that one on. It looks quite cool. That one actually looks really cool. We're not going to use it, but it looked cool. So if you wanted to, you can go through there. And then the final tab is the custom tab. Now this is where you can save your custom settings. So I'm actually going to save this one as a custom one. And now I can flick through my different custom settings. So you can see I've got two different fonts here, slightly similar different highlights. I'm gonna stick with the one I created. So next time I make captions, if I want it to look similar, I can just jump in and select my pre-made style. It also just makes the whole process a lot quicker for you. You can also drag and move your captions around. I'm gonna put mine about there. Okay, I've actually dragged the captions up a little bit because I think it looks better. I don't want it blocking from that box of film right there because the white and white doesn't look great, but scrubbing through the video, they are all looking really good. So then to export the captions, just hit export up the top. 
You can do original quality or you can compress it down to 1080p or 720p. We're gonna go for original quality, which I believe this is in 4K. Hit start exporting and then it's gonna export it. So you can see, nice and quick export there for you. Do do do, Two, I could have a sip of coffee in this time. And now you've successfully captioned your short form content really easily. So jumping back in, there's a different part of the application that I wanna show you quickly. So I'm gonna rerun those captions. I'm gonna reselect English. As I say, there are 18 different languages you can select from. And as you can see here, there are auto highlight and dynamic captions. If I turn on auto highlight, it's gonna pick random words throughout the text that it will automatically highlight for me. I leave that turned off because I wanna be able to select it myself because there's different reasons why I wanna highlight my text. So like example, beforehand when I said I wanna highlight the name of the brand that sent me the film to play with, I wanted to send highlight the fact that I never shoot black and white, stuff like that. Lines of subtitles, you can put single or multiple. I prefer single lines and the reason for that is because when you're doing short form content, keeping your user engaged is crucial. It is completely key to the success of your short form content. So having captions that are constantly changing, literally word by word, something's always happening on the screen, keeping your user's attention. Max characters, I do 14 for the exact same reason, so the captions were as short as possible, meaning there's constantly something going on on the screen. Dynamic captions is something you can turn on. Now, this is where it will give it a dynamic effect, such as words popping up one after the other, or words fading in, or the captions filling up with a color as the word is being spoken. And then at the bottom, there is an option for bilingual subtitles. Now this might be self-explanatory. It says translate. Guess what it does? It translates. Oh my If I hit translate and then let's translate it to German, for example, because I can speak a little bit of German, so I might be able to recognize this. Let's hit recognize. However, if I do translate, it will turn off the dynamic captions. I just want to point that out really quickly. It will take back some of the changes we just made. So I'm going to show you the translate option right now, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you the dynamic captions. Okay, so it's generated those captions. Now let's have a quick look. First thing you're going to notice is it's done two lines of captions. The reason is top line is in English, bottom line is in German. Let's have a quick little scroll through here. Look at that. I can actually understand as well, which I'm quite impressed with. Now, if the fact that it translates your captions isn't cool enough, one of the coolest things for me is if I go into style, I can change the style of my original text and let's do that, for example. But then I can go into the translation and I can set a completely different style for the translation, separating them from the two so you don't get confused between the two captions and you end up trying to read both through. That is awesome. You may be wondering, why would you ever use that? Well, if you have a look at your analytics on your short form content, you might have a massive following in a different part of the world. And if you want to capitalize on the fact that you get loads of your views from Germany, for example, you can add this, have German captions as well as your English captions, to keep that audience engaged and to grow that audience base there. This is such an untapped thing that creators aren't doing and I think it's providing a really easy way into capitalizing in your other markets and your other audiences around the world. So one more time, I'm gonna rerun these captions and this time I wanna take you through the dynamic effect. So once again, I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna select English, I'm gonna do single line at 14 because that's my preferences. And this time I'm gonna hit dynamic captions and recognize. Now, if I play this video through, you can see the dynamic effect that has been made in which the words are popping up one at a time on the screen. As I previously mentioned, you want something to be always happening in your short form content to keep your viewer engaged in your video. This is another great way of doing that. Because the captions are constantly popping up on the screen with every single word you speak, you're keeping your audience engaged in your content. Now, if I go into edit the text, hit dynamic effect, I can change the dynamic effect that has been applied. So I can have it popping up like that in like a fadey way. I can have the words being filled with color as they go. I can have them in two different colors if I want to. I can have this little TikTok logo bouncing around all my words, which is really distracting in my opinion, but at the same time, it definitely keeps your audience engaged. So you can come in here and you can have a play around and pick the dynamic effect that suits you best. So as I've taken you through everything you can do in the application, I've sort of given you a good idea of everything that I really like about the app. Let's go through some more quick fire points. So as previously mentioned, I love all the fonts and the font selections. I think they're actually really unique to a lot of the other applications I've used to try and create captions in. I think the fonts in here are actually really unique and I really like them. It is both fast and easy to create and export the captions. The app itself is really simple, so it's really user-friendly. Absolutely love the batch highlighting tool. And the dynamic effects are unique to stuff that I've seen in other applications. I feel like a lot of apps just have the same effect. Don't get me wrong, it has some of the same effects that other applications use, but there are some very 
unique ones in there that I really like. And the fact that I can save my custom styles for later at literally the hit of one button is a godsend. I absolutely love that. But there are a few things that I think that could be improved about the application itself. And as promised, I'm gonna be completely transparent on what I think those are. When I hit generate the captions, I wish it would save my preferences. This is a really nitty gritty thing to start on, but having to every time select English, select single line, select 14 characters, auto highlight or not, auto dynamic captions or not, I just wish it would save the preferences that I do every single time as like my default and then if I want to change from there I'm happy to but I use the same settings in that screen every single time so I do wish that it would just save those or retain those settings whenever I do that. I personally think that the batch editing tool for the text could be a little bit better more in so that when you hit play to hear the part of the video that it's captioning it's a really quick snippet and it's not quite the full word I think it literally needs like a half a second either end just so that you can really nail in the words that you're trying to caption. As I say, I really like the dynamic effects that are within the app. I just wish there were some, a few more. But that being said, the ones that are in there are really good. But they're actually the only things I really dislike about the application. They're me being quite picky and a bit nitty gritty, but I feel like those things would make it flow better in my workflow. And on that note, where does this app fit in my workflow? This is just how I do it, so this is how my workflow goes. But whenever I create a long form YouTube video, I will chop that video up into a load of short form pieces of content and then transfer them over to my phone for posting a short form content. Previously, I was relying on TikTok's built in captioning tool to caption my videos. However, it's not always the best and it doesn't give you masses and masses amounts of customer visibility. Customizability, is that a word? You know what I mean. So Zemo fits in right in the middle there, gets moved over to my phone moved into Zemo, run the captioning, export, upload into socials. It fits really nicely into my workflow there. It doesn't add 10, 15 minutes to the whole process of me uploading a video. It literally adds a couple minutes for me to quickly create the captions and then upload it as short form content. It fits in my workflow really well. I would like to say a massive thank you to Zemo for sponsoring this video and for giving me the flexibility to try out the application, see if it fits into my workflow, which it does, and then create this video to help you guys out. The link to the website is below. You can download the application from both the App Store and the Google Play Store. If you do use Zemo or if you've used it in the past, drop a comment down below and let's have a chat. How did you get along with the app? What did you think of it? But that's it for me. As I say, I think it's an awesome application. I wouldn't be recommending it and making this video for you guys if I didn't think it was an awesome application. And it genuinely, genuinely does fit really well into my workflow. So that's it. If you like the video, drop a thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you aren't already. All the other stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. And I will see you in the next one. One more big thank you to Zemo for sponsoring this video. Peace.